Actually, mm -hmm. it says Knupke. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you say Knupke. Right? You say Knupke. <laughs> the <laughs> Americanized <laughs> version. Right. Okay. <laughs> and um, so you got it. I got thank it. You. All right. Thank you, Carl. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming here. Um, one thing that the one thing that I wanted to start with, uh, Peter started to talk about yesterday, and I was like, Oh no, he's good. <laughs> That's the thing I want to do. But uh, I have I have a lot more to say about it, so I'm still going to do it anyway. Uh, there, he talked about this. He started to talk about improvising with two notes and restricting yourself to two notes. Well, I'll do my best. <laughs> um, Okay, so. You need a mic for Chuck. Does Chuck have a mic? Is it on? Yeah. Just needs to be on. So maybe, maybe you can take the mic out. Oh, Matthew, Matthew, will, Matthew will probably come back. Well, yeah, he, he, took, he took everything over there. I don't know if you can turn that on. I know it's recording, so that's happening. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. Try to speak out. Okay, so I first heard about this exercise from Steve Lacey, who was very methodical about it, and I recreated the method that he created for trumpet, and basically make a catalog of every interval that's possible on your instrument. You start, you know, you take your lowest note, and then you can go a half step above that, and then you can go a whole step above that, and you can go a minor third above that, and you write them all out, and it's going to take you a long time. And, then, and as, as far as you want to go, and then he Chuck, took every interval, can you try? Check, check, and check, check. it's working. Check, 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 These are recording mics. Kurt, and just for the purposes of this, uh, could you just start that bit over? Oh, sure, okay. Could be the wrong mic. That's so long as I just want to know where it actually This works? Um, no. Neither works. Neither works. Okay, we're going to get started again then, because now we're, we're recording this. Um, so the Steve Lacey interval exercise covers every interval available on your instrument. And so you make, you make yourself a gigantic chart, and you could, even, you could start small and start with one octave on each note, starting with your lowest notes or something like that to give yourself, because when I came, with hundreds of, of options, which is also fascinating on, on any instrument, uh, even on an instrument with limited range like the trumpet, you have a lot of options. So you take, in, you take every interval and write it down, and, ah. then, and then you cut it up yeah. and put it in a hat Talk and then drop them out. Talk. Kurt, it's working now. Hello. Okay, there you go. Working. Okay, so then, then you take all your intervals and cut them up, put them into a hat, take them out, and then you have on, John, random. Right? Yes. Then you have them all completely random, so you're not starting with F sharp every time, F sharp to G, F sharp to G sharp, so that there's nothing to relate them to except them, themselves. There's no root, there's just a, a higher note and a lower note. And then you take this interval, it could be one a day, and you improvise with it for kind of as long as possible until you kind of start to lose your mind. 
<laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> thirty seconds. It could be. It could initially. It could be thirty seconds that you start to lose your mind. Let me get my horn, and I'll just pick one. Some lines are better than others. You can never lose your mind. <laughs> Where you, if you're losing your mind, you're just going somewhere else in your mind. That's a good place to go. And you're also supposed to sing it. So you play it, sing it, play it, sing it, and then improvise. And at the beginning, you can give yourself no criteria other than just these two notes. Later on, you can apply time, the time element to each interval and work within just that time. So what I have is I have my chart, and let's say right now I'm going to do F and G um, one whole step, and that's what I'm going to work with, and there's going to be no time element. Later on, I have other charts that I made that are every metronome marking, and um, then I'll check off I work on with the metronome playing at 40, and then I just use my these two notes, and, and I improvise against the time. Uh, ingredient, but right now I'll do the first one, which is without, which is without time. So. <laughs> don't have to worry about what to play. Because people are always more worried about what notes to play than what rhythms to play. Mm -hmm. There's a thousand books written about what notes to play, and there's no books written about what rhythms to play, hardly. I mean, if you're going to study improvisation, people don't even talk about it. Or what dynamic, or what attack, or... Uh, so when you take out the note equation on what you're going to do, then you're left with just the rhythm, just the attack, um, then it, it kind of takes away the what am I going to play thing. Because you've got to play one of the notes, and, it, and it'll happen. Just like Carl was just saying, kind of wait, wait for it, and, and, it, and you'll start to hear it. And that's, that's what's so cool, because you don't have to have, in a, lot of, in a lot of ways, you don't have to have an idea. And so when I hear people improvising in their space, I can feel that they're worried about the fact that they don't have an idea. And they're, so it's, it's, they're not just waiting for the train, they're like really waiting for the train. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh, they have to go to the bathroom or something. <laughs> and, then, and then you rush to get on the train. And because there's, there's an illusion, I think, that you have to have a fully formed idea to start. Because everyone talks about pre-hearing 
And when you play, you are pre-hearing, but you're, you're in the middle of the phrase. You're in the middle of the idea when you're pre-hearing and before you come in. You don't have to start at the beginning. You don't have to have the whole idea before you come in. Um, so that, that exercise really opened up that for me. I never worry about, well, not never, but I worry a lot less about what am I going to play. Um, and the other, so the, that's, that's the two-note exercise. So I encourage you all to make a catalog of them and, and work on one every day and sing it. Just, and you really start to hear it. Even if it's out of your range, still try. Um, or what you think your range is, still try. If it's, if it's on your horn or on your instrument, you should be able to sing some version of it, hopefully. Otherwise, um, that pre-hearing thing is going to be difficult for you on your instrument. Um, which brings me to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is um, Butch Morris, who I played with for six years. And if ever, he was a guiding artist here. Um, and does there, is everybody familiar with, yeah. with Butch? So I was going to yes. One or two of his workshops. Oh, great. So to... Well, then I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat some things that he did. Oh, okay. But uh... it's thirty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that Butch taught me was he. Well, I'll explain for somebody that doesn't know. He he was a conductor that had a system for conducting improvisers, and it was a very open system. Although he could be very grouchy about what he wanted. Um, but it was still very open to interpretation, and um, basically it was kind of isolating all these aspects of music, because I always improvised, ever since I was a little kid and before I could read music or anything. My favorite thing to do was just get my trumpet out and just start playing. And so impro improvising for me wasn't anything new ever. Uh, after those, after it started, um, but then what I learned from Butch is how you really construct something out of nothing and have it be music with what, all, what are all the things that music needs and what makes music. So at the beginning, very beginning, oops, put this down for a second. Um, because we, we played for six years, like I said, together in four different bands. And went all over the world and never had any music. In one group we had music, and he was a brilliant composer of written music as well, which people don't know. But, um, so, you know, you get on stage at the Noisy Jazz Festival and there's like 10 guys and we don't have any music. You know, and there's like thousands of people in there that are waiting <laughs> to watch you. And so, but he always made the music move and always made a piece, and he had very few hand signals, really. I think there's maybe only like 20, and he uh, sometimes only used a few of them. So the very first one is, is called sustain, and it's like this. And then you would play the note when, baton, when his baton crossed his hand. That's when you change. Um, and I, I'm going to relate this back to um, how I still feel about improvisation after Butch. And I, when I play, in every situation, I think about this stuff. Because you have all these options. Um, you don't have to take a solo. You don't have to have a fully formed idea. You don't have to repeat something. You don't have to sustain something. You have all these options available to you. So the ones I want to talk about from Butch are sustain, repeat, and um, and then a thing that he would call graphic, which we'll, we'll get to. I'm just kind of reminding myself what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> and then, uh, then there would be one to take a solo. And then there was another one that was called pedestrian, where he would just say, all right, come in. And it meant you were free to do whatever you wanted, but you weren't taking a solo. You were just there. Then there was also accompanying other people in the ensemble. And then there was also trying to echo other people in the ensemble. So these are all things that are options when you're playing. Uh, some people, when they improvise, they think their only option is to be repetitive, or they think their only option is to take a solo. And when you're in a free context, you 
have all these different options. So I want to work with everybody playing a little bit, and we're going to do uh, the first one, which is called sustain. And Carl, when Carl conducts, he has he has a similar, like everybody's going to play a sound. Uh, and Sun Ra called it the space chord. We would just say, all right, everybody in the band play a note, because you get a, you get a space chord, you get this amazing chord that no one would ever write. And then the next time everybody sustains, you get another. So let's just do this a couple of times. Carl actually invented. I believe that. That way of directing. So I, and, and I, w I was going to say about Butch that he wasn't the first guy. No. And he told me that he got a lot of um, of his stuff also from. Um, uh, Thompson. Um, no, the uh, before that the uh, the drummer that's on that was in Ornette's trio of Golden Circle. Charles Moffat. Charles Moffat. Charles Moffat. Charles Moffat. Butch told me he got a lot of stuff from Charles Moffat too. So he um, he didn't in, he didn't invent this stuff, but I got it from Butch. So he's my um, first. And then and then I love working with Carl as well. So um, let's let's do some different sustains. So every time every time I move, you just move your your chord. But listen across the band, and make your sound work with everyone else's sound. Okay. And for drummers. Uh, you make a sound that sustains. It could be a roll or whatever, but you're, you're also making a sustaining sound. Okay, all right? <laughs> Something awesome just happened, and so this this first instruction of his, which is was his most basic thing, taught me that everybody can play together, and everybody doesn't have to start at different times. Everybody can just start. There's a thing that almost always happens with free improvisation, where it's like, okay, we're going to start, and then everybody's kind of like, um, well, I guess I could start, and then and then somebody's like. Okay, Cool. You, you do your thing for a while, and then I'll 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 come in. And often there's this very tentative starting, and then people get more excited, and then they try to find an ending, and, and it almost always has this arc. But it can just start. Everybody can kind of look around, and you can kind of create this energy in the room, like okay, we're all going to start, and then just everybody starts and comes in. So that that was like yeah, you can just play. You know, you can just play a note, and so that's that's what that taught me. And um, then he would use a, a signal called repeat. And it was like this. And it meant repeat something. But it was the most difficult, um, the most difficult instruction for everybody in the band, almost always. Because he wanted something that repeats, but something that's not instantly annoying in the fact that it's repeating. <laughs> So he wanted, he, wanted, he wanted you to play kind of a long phrase that had space in it, because then he would apply other, um, other signals to this repeat signal. So he, he would always give us examples of the repeat. So he said, like, like if you were in time, he would do this little dance. And say, ba, ba, repeat, da, ba, ba. So then that's your, your repeat. He didn't want it to be like, da, 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 or something. You know, like, like the, you, because he said you can't, you don't want to let it box you in. Because then he had another, uh, another instruction that was called develop. So he's having you repeat, and then he says, okay, I want you to develop your, your re repetition. So, ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba, Udita, ba, 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 ba. Udita, ba, 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 ba. Udita, di, ba, ba. It can change, but you're still in your repetitious phrase. And then he would say, put it back together. So, after, and then you put it back to ba, ba. Udita, right? So let's try. I want to try some some repetition. And what this, 
what this teaches you in a free context or in a jazz context is that you have you have something that you're building on and you can always go back to it. When he liked something you were repeating, he would say, okay, and you would do this. And that meant, remember this, because I'm going to make you do it again. And it could be 15 minutes from now. And so that would be called memory one, and you have to really remember, but, but. Because then all of a sudden he'd say, memory one, and give everybody a downbeat, and you wanted it to be back in there. And that was like, it, the, re the repeat thing I had to think about all the time. Because sometimes he would, he, he would say, repeat something, and then you just had to do it over and over again. And regardless of if you wanted to keep repeating it or not, you'd be like, oh man, this is so lame. And when I have to keep playing over again, I'm so tired of it, I hate it. And uh, so it made, made me think a lot more about what I play and how effective it is, or is it really, like, you know, do I, is it helping anything, this, this idea that I have? Because you get, you get tired of it pretty fast. But let's have, I want to go around and have everybody try to repeat, okay? And we're going to do it in time, because all these things can be in or out of time. But it's going to be here and use space, okay? So we're going to, I'm going to add one person at a time. Just remember your phrase, it can be four bars long, it can be five bars long, it just has to repeat, okay? So we're starting here. One, two, one, two. So then there was, a, there was always a lot of taking people out and bringing people back in. So you had to remember where your phrase is, even if you don't get, because you might not be brought in at the top of a four bar phrase or something if, you're, if your repeat was longer. So you, you have to remember how it locked in with all your partners around you. Uh, and that got tricky. So Kirk, I have a question. Yes. So if he brought you back in in the middle, or you bring someone in the middle, you should wait for the beginning of the phrase? Uh, no, you should try to come in right where you were. In, in okay, so not right when you conduct, but right. Okay. Well, it could, it could be either way, but if but if if you were playing a four-bar phrase and then it's, if it 
felt in a weird time. You want it, to have it locking in is more okay. important. Okay. So, um, so, I just want to make sure I understand. Mm -hmm. So, I have a four bar phrase, and you cue me to come back in on major three. I should remember where major three is, not start with major one and be out of right, phrase. Right, exactly. Because okay, you, you want it to work like it did the first time so it sounds the same. Got it. As, as so, we're going to do it again, and what, now what I'm going to do is work with the uh, development and then putting it back together. So I want everybody to start at the same time. Um, we're going to count off. Don't play the same thing that you just did. Um, but play another repetitive phrase, and then we're going to work with, with um, developing it and then putting it back together. So let's take a slightly different um, tempo so that we're not too uh, wanting to play what we just played. So we're going to go slow. One, two, three, four. It doesn't matter if you have an idea. You got to start. <laughs> so that's, that's the that's the brilliant thing about it. So if you have if you okay, so there's the downbeat. You don't have to play on one. That's another thing that would bug him all the time. You don't have to play on one. You could wait a manager to come in, but you do have to then have that measure of rest is your first measure of your repetitive phrase you gotta do every time. So you gotta instantly think on your feet and uh, and remember what you did. Even if it's just one note. Da -da. Da -da. Something. Okay. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> simplify your idea as part of developing and it doesn't just mean you start to solo and I think that people could do more of both try adding a lot and try taking away a lot so then when you were saying open it up what were you looking for? I'm looking for a development so does so that mean back away from the original idea or that's just no it means build on the original idea okay. exactly okay. yeah so you, you, your original idea is like the theme, and then you're kind of okay, and then you get and then you're spawns. exactly so. See, so have a yeah, a couple of hand signatures, and I missed. Yeah, so this this, this is developed. Add, and then yeah, and then away. put it back together. Yeah. It doesn't mean add or take away. It means change in in, in development. Whatever development means to you, and for most people, it means you're going to add something. Just, and then but but it can also be taking something away. Like when Carl was singing a phrase, and he started ghosting half the notes. Yeah. You know, he, he was developing that phrase, but he was he was removing stuff from it. So this would be go back to what you it, started? Yes, it just means go back to what your original idea was, ex, you know, develop your idea back to, back to it. There was another question? question? Okay, cool. So let's try it one more time. And I want you to really stick to your guns. And, uh, and <laughs> Butch would always say something that's mildly offensive, but he'd say, pimp that shit. <laughs> Better be strong and wrong than weak and right. Exactly. All right, and then, then you would always say, "Give me your bad shit." <laughs> like, cause you, yeah, you're like you gotta, you didn't want, you didn't want it to be, you know, wimpy. He wanted, even if it was quiet, he wanted it to be in its own way funky. You know what I mean? 
So let's let's two space. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> inclination is like oh and they stop playing that oh, okay but uh, so because it's what's really cool is to have this in time thing and then take it out of time and, <coughs> and sustain or have some people sustain other people uh, repeat and uh, then so one thing I want to do now is I want to build up another one but uh, I'm gonna have people that are that are gonna gonna improvise over it um, so and then I'm gonna take some other people out and, and have some other people sustain and there's another thing that uh, that he would do that I want to do that he would call the graphic. He would say interpret the graph, and all he meant was that he was going to do something with his baton that he wanted you to play, and and basically it was high on your instrument, low on your instrument, but just interpret the graph, and this could get really wild mm. with a bunch of people. So let's just try that, and I'll do my best to give you something interesting to <laughs> interpret. But uh, so everybody's going to play and, and, and we're going to interpret the graph. So this is another thing that I do when I'm playing, when I'm improvising. If I'm not taking a solo, I'm not accompanying, I'm not playing something repetitive, playing something sustaining. Sometimes I'll just play something that I imagine is, is the graph in my mind. It can just be like, you know, just these little things. And they can be really, you know, it can be a really inspiring thing for the whole band. So let's try it. All right, you ready? So. <laughs> it's over. But it's, you know. Oh. I mean, it's oh. kind of when, only when in motion, right? I didn't, I'm not explaining this once, I'm sorry. But so, but there was some very good ones in there. But so like. <laughs> So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that would be an encore. We just do that for like 20 seconds. <laughs> the greatest hits. Exactly. There was another. There, so then, then there was another thing that was like the graphic, right. but it was called. Um, uh, man, it's escaping me, but it, but but you went around in a circle. Okay. Um, so we we'll start here, and and when he was when he was looking at you, you played. And then when 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 you were when he moved away from you, you stop. And the this would be a repetition too. So it was oh man, he'd kill me for not remembering the name. It's like scat. Yeah. So it's it's like.
stuff. Every stuff at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I wanted, I was trying to draw you into the sustain as well. I was trying to draw you, I was trying to say everybody in the sustain. So that you would stop improvising and go on sustain. But the improvise was awesome. So, um, uh, so this is this is cool, and you can see how this just could go on and on and on. And since we have two drummers here, uh, one thing that he would do all the time, which I really loved, is count drummers in in different tempos. <laughs> <laughs> so the band almost always had two drummers. Only once or twice did we work without without two drummers, and it was Kenny Wallace and Yoko Roker, like really amazing guys. And so he'd say. You're like, all right, so that's you. And he didn't want a beat necessarily. He wanted a repetitive phrase. And for bass players, he didn't ever really want any walking. He wanted you to just be like a horn player, guitar player, uh, something that you can build on that's not static, right? So let's let's try this. We're going to try this two tempo thing, okay? All right. So so not a when you say not a beat, not a just not a groove. Or you know, or like a, a repetitive. Like, yeah, so you're, you're, you're improvising. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to repeat. He would just say, come in. Because it was, it was subtle. He would say, okay, repeat something and count off. And he would just say, all right, I want you to come in. But then he would give you a time, which meant you didn't have to play a repetitious phrase. You just came in. So he'd be like, all right, you're going to come in. One, two, three, four.
<laughs> That's great. So this is so much fun. You can really do this all day long, and everybody, um, everybody can take turns. And it's it's a little scary. It's the first time trying to trying to have people do it, but uh, it's it's I don't know. This is so much fun. Thank you, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> So I, 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 I kind of, I would make my own solo pieces based on just one or two instructions, too. I would, if I, if I came time to play a solo, I'd say, I'm going to say, take a sustain solo, you know? Um, I'm going to take a repeat solo, I'm going to take a graphic solo, I'm going to take a, an accompaniment solo, even if they're the only person there. Um, so it just, it just kind of took so much mystery away for me of what, where you start, what needs to happen, and then, and then when you're in, I want you guys to just improvise now, based on these kind of ideas of, of sustain, repeat, graphic, take a solo, and one thing I, I didn't talk about as much as the pedestrian where you're you're in but you're not, you're not the soloist. So I want you guys to think about that one too, and um, and using a lot of space, and I will t I will count you in, but that's it. So. Then everybody's just in. You don't have to start all at once, but try and try amongst yourselves. Decide who could be a soloist and who is accompanying. You know, not everybody has to play it all the t all the time. And the other thing that was so cool about having a conductor was, I would say, the biggest thing is that you would tell people not to play. And sometimes large groups of people <laughs> take out everybody but the but the one saxophone player that that was soloing or that was repeating. It didn't mean that he was only going to take away everybody but the soloist. Um, so try in large groups to not play. <laughs> so let's, 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 let's do everybody's their own conductor, okay? Let's try it. Yeah, there was some really great stuff in the last one, yeah. Um,
That was awesome. That was really awesome. Wow. Beautiful. I mean, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> I'll say it again. <laughs> there's, there's, there's one exactly. There's one um, one thing my friend Matt Wilson says um, that that applies to this this thing where you have all uh, you have all these options. There's the problem with a lot of musicians is, but well, he doesn't say this. I haven't gotten his quote yet. This is me. Um, the problem is you have a lot of horn players that can't play without playing a solo, or you have drummers that can't play without playing a drum beat, and, or, or bass players that can't play without playing an ostinato or something. You know what I mean? People get like locked in to their, into their thing when you really have all these options uh, to do everything. But what my friend Matt likes to say, there's like a truck commercial or something where they say like, lead follower, get out of the way, you know, <laughs> so stupid. But he said, he said that, that improvising is lead, follow, and get out of the way. <laughs> you, it's your job to do all three. You should never be doing one, only one. You should never be only leading, never only following, because that's that's probably the biggest drag are playing with people that only can do one of those things. Mostly people's problems are either leading or always following. And when you're feeling like every the guy or girl next to you is just trying to echo everything you're doing, it's that's really not very fun. You want to get information from them too, and you guys all do this so masterfully, but I just wanted to mention that because I like that quote. <laughs> but thank you guys. Wow. start from, from uh, I'll say one other quick thing, is that I was talking about these solo pieces um, based on the different instructions, and my friend Brian and I, we have a duo, he's Brian Dry is this great trombone player that lives in Brooklyn, and uh, we have tunes that are just kind of zones, and we don't, we don't tell the audience that this tune is called slow and, slow and loud. <laughs> But the, we have like this. That's our. That's our. That's the tune, and that's the instruction, and that's the whole thing. So we have we have a tune called pedal tune, where we start playing pedal tones. And that's how the tune starts. You know, I mean, if you just make it, it, it you can do anything. We have, and then we have loud, loud and slow, and we have fast and quiet. That's another song. You know, and then we have a tune called plunger tune, where we, we use plungers. But it's like all you have to do is have a zone, and then you go from there, and it's obviously going to be different every time, or at least I hope so. And uh, so let's 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 kind of start from. Let's say we're going to start from. Well, no, let's not. But just have that idea that you could do that if you wanted to. I want everybody to have their own idea on this. But but I was going to say let's start from a sustain, but you ended on such a beautiful sustain in the last one. <laughs> so I would say uh, let's maybe let's let's think of uh, of. of just think of whatever you want to start with, and that's where we'll start. Um, if it's going to be repeating or sustaining or playing or not playing or soloing or graphic or pedestrian or whatever, okay? And I won't count it off. I'll just just give everybody a downbeat.